along with along with all the teachers who are with you is of great experience and this particular topic ca pinesh will be asked either in the theory or in the practical and we have chosen these two topics in which most of the cancer pinesh will be covered so with this small introduction i hand it over to dr rajiv tp and uh, to conduct the session i not only thank our teachers but i also thank our students for appearing in time and so far they have performed so well that uh, our purpose is fully utilized for the practice session of the final examination very soon we are going to meet in the physical mock test in guwahati medical college on 22nd and wish all of you a very good luck for the coming days and today's class thank you rajiv over to rajiv good evening everyone first of all uh, i will uh, like to wish everyone pohala bisha odisha ji bihu vishu and jayanti on this auspicious day i had the opportunity to moderate the section on cfns so at the outset i would like to thank president of uh, east zone chapter urological society of india dr kalyan sarkar and the honorary secretary of east zone chapter urological society of india professor ranjan kumar de and the council for giving me this opportunity uh, to moderate this uh, smart learning program for the trainees today's topic being carcinoma penis because one all of you will be getting this case as the secretary has highlighted either in theory or in uh, clinicals so there is no escape you should know each and everything about uh, carcinoma penis and i have with me esteemed teachers in the panel i would like to introduce uh, dr arshad jaman who is the associate professor and in charge department of urology at uh, rajendra institute of medical sciences ranchi then uh, dr sunil mal choudhury who is the associate professor in the department of urology at uh, ipgmr and sssm hospital kolkata then uh, dr tarun jindal who is the Uh, consultant at um, Narayana Vidyalaya and uh, uh, Rabindranath Tagore Hospital, Kolkata. Again, Dr. Prashant Nayak, who is the additional professor and in charge at all at AIMS Bhuvaneshwar, who will be uh, interacting with you, and they have uh, prepared uh, wonderful cases for presentation, and you should be very happy. that they have taken a lot of pains for presenting these cases today again i welcome the trainees for today's program dr mukesh jaiswal dr sachin patel dr deepu singh dr pradeep de and dr shahid kumar uh, shahid amit kumar so today we have three case case scenarios on uh, carcinoma penis uh, one will be a straight forward uh, growth without any glands another will be a growth with uh, palpable glands and another will be a case of uh, ca penis it's 7 o'clock and um, there will be video step by step for total penectomy and uh, video on video endoscopic inguinal lymphadenectomy so i i would request the students that is the trainees not to waste any time because we don't have uh, sufficient time to cover all these things in this stipulated time so they should be quick to the answers otherwise they should leave it so that the teachers will take it over again i would uh, like to uh, welcome uh, professor uh, mahendra singh who was the past president of uh, east zone chapter urological society of india and former professor and head at indira gandhi institute of medical sciences patna sir are you there and uh, i would like to welcome you to this uh, program otherwise i would request a professor uh, kalyan saka who is the president of east zone chapter urological society of india to give a brief welcome address 
Over to you, sir. So you are to unmute yourself. Good evening. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, TP. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to all of you. I think this is a, uh, uh, this is an initiative uh, very much to the heart of uh, of the Council of the East Council of USI, and uh, very much an activity originally conceived by uh, by Dr. Ranjan Dev for Bengal Urological Society. He has now so very successfully brought it to a larger forum. And uh, I'm sure that uh, all the participants in this program will, uh, will find it beneficial. So, uh, uh, so I think with these few words, let this uh, uh, session proceed as per plan. So over, over to the moderator and the, uh, uh, and the organizers and, and the panelists. Thank you, sir, for your nice words. So with this, we will start today's program. First of all, I would like a request, welcome uh, Dr. Arshad, uh, Dr. Arshad Jamal, who is the Associate Professor and in charge of uh, Department of Urology at uh, RIMS Ranchi to make his uh, presentation. Over to you, Arshad. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm sharing my screen now. Am I visible now, sir? Yes. Am I visible? No, visible. You can go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I'm presenting a case uh, of carcinoma penis. There is a 46 year old man with a painless growth on the glands since the last two months. There were no urinary symptoms, no high risk behavior. He was a chronic smoker and there was no comorbid illness. On systemic examination, systemic examination was normal. And uh, there was a growth on the external genitalia of about one into 0 0.5 centimeter on the right lateral aspect of the glands reaching the corona. There was no induration, external urinary meatus was normal and uh, penile shaft is also normal. On inguinal uh, examination, there was no palpable nodes in the inguinal region. So my question to the uh, students is, what next? Dr. Mukesh. Good evening, sir. Sir. Yes. Good evening, sir. Please Am I speak. audible? Yeah, you yeah. select two students uh, or three students per case so that it will be circulated among all the uh, participants. Yeah. Yes, sir. sir, I am Sachin Patel from Guwahati Medical College. So, yeah, Sachin. Dr. Sachin. Can you take over the answer? The question is, this is a case, the case has been presented by the teacher now. How will you go forward with this case? Uh, sir, I would like to uh, ask more history in detail regarding uh, any history of phimosis in uh, past or any history of uh, uh, multiple uh, sexual partner uh, in past? There is no history of multiple sexual partner, but uh, he had a history of circumcision in, adult, in adulthood. Okay. Sir, any uh, comorbid condition, diabetic hypertension? There is no comorbid condition, no comorbid conditions. Uh, sir, on examination, there is 1 into 0.5 centimeter and painless growth is uh, there. So, my uh, an inguinal region, there is no inguinal lymph node palpable. My probable diagnosis is in 46 year male, painless uh, growth uh, with uh, um, uh, exo um, uh, cauliflower like growth is seen on lateral aspect of the penis uh, and it is seen on glands. So most uh, my provisional diagnosis is uh, growth over the penis, uh, query carcinoma penis. Okay. Do you have any other differential diagnosis? 
sir uh, uh, um, it can be benign lesion also which is condyloma fulminata flat flat what kind of a growth yes sir and uh, sir uh, another benign lesion uh, like uh, uh, he has history of multiple sexual partners so can be uh... okay how will you proceed with the case what will you do next how will you evaluate i would like like to further uh, routine blood investigation sir and uh, after that uh, 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 cbc rft sodium potassium and rbs then sir i would like to take biopsy of the lesion wedge biopsy of the lesion wedge biopsy okay so uh, sachin i would like to hear Yes. Uh, before proceeding would you like to do any routine investigations yes sir routine investigation uh, complete <coughs> blood counts uh, 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 serum creatinine uh, rbs okay because always it is paramount to do a routine evaluation before you proceed on biopsy yes biopsy is mandatory to confirm the thing but yes. the that routine evaluation uh, tests are mandatory so in the exam you have to say that first you have to do the routine things what all you require then yes. long after seeing the thing then i will proceed with the biopsy okay sir any other biopsy and can you think of any other biopsy which can do besides the wedge biopsy sir if it is on uh, uh, prepucial then we can uh, growth is on prepucial then we can do circumcisional biopsy also or uh, yes, if you will do a small, then sir we can do biopsy. in 1 cent 1 cm uh, we can do excisional biopsy also sir yes yes what is incisional what is incisional biopsy what is sir, incisional biopsy and what is excisional biopsy sir excisional biopsy means with uh, all, uh, all, uh, all lesion uh, is uh, excise with a, a 5 0.5 mm or 5 mm margin and uh, incisional biopsy means sir it is uh, taken uh, from growth on uh, from the age incisional biopsy yes. includes any uh, normal tissue also yes sir in incisional biopsy we can take uh, uh, normal tissue also to see the depth of invasion in normal mandatory you have to take a normal yes. tissue also yes sir. so what are what are you going to look for in the biopsy Sir, uh, 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 one is the type of the uh, 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 car. Uh, it is carcinoma, invasive carcinoma or non-invasive carcinoma. Uh, uh, another type uh, type is this squamous cell, non-squamous cell carcinoma, and uh, a grade of the uh, uh, carcinoma. Anything else other than depth? The depth of invasion. any other thing you want to do we'll also like to see the lymphovascular lymphovascular invasion invasion and in perineural invasion and uh, hpv status of the patient okay so this is the chest x ray now we this is the biopsy report moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma right side and dorsum of lance penis Okay. What will you do next? Uh, now we will uh, do other uh, uh, final plan for penis. Uh, uh, As there is bilateral inguinal lymph node is not palpable. Patient is non-obese and it is surgically fit. Then we will do uh, one centimeter lesion. we can do wide local excision with a bilateral modified inguinal lymph node dissection after anesthetic checkup wide local excision excision what do you mean wide local excision anything else you want can anesthetic check why what is the meaning of wide local excision sir wide local excision is uh, uh, excision of the all lesion with 5 uh, 5 to 10 mm of margin here it is moderately differentiated then we can do uh, we can take a uh, 10 mm margin also 
Ashad. Yeah, the other information that we are talking about, the lymphovascular invasion, the perineal invasion, those are not there. The depth of invasion is not there. Yes, sir. So, yeah. When a, when a biopsy report is given like that, are you satisfied with the biopsy report? No, sir. Okay. Sir, here we, uh, uh, we need more uh, information like depth of invasion and uh, lymphovascular invasion and, and uh, vascular invasion is also... Those are not there. Those are not mentioned. So what will you do? So we will do, uh, sir... Would you still do a wide local excision? If it is feasible, then, sir, we can do. Our patient is uh, uh, well educated and patient is uh, wants uh, penile preserving surgery. We can give both options to the patient, like partial penectomy and uh, wide local excision. Partial amputation of the penis. Okay. What yes. next? Yeah. Uh, if we do partial amputation of penis, then we have to do, sir, also bilateral modified inguinal lymph node dissection as this is non-palpable lymph node, both sides. Is it mandatory to do bilateral lymph node dissection in this case? Yes, sir. Uh, at present, uh, in uh, non-palpable lymph node, we have to do bilateral modified lymph node dissection. Uh, in all cases? Uh, sir, uh, we can uh, uh, take observation also, but we have to see the histopathological report. What, what of is the likely and... stage? What is the likely stage of this tumor? Uh, here is the we... biopsy report. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, here is the lymph uh, moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma of penis involving subepithelial connective tissue of the glands. Lymphovascular invasion is present. Corpora cavernosum and urethra is free of tumor. Here, sir, lymphovascular invasion is present. It is uh, under T1B. So prior, prior to getting the biopsy report, you have to at the same time at a partial penectomy, would you contemplate this bilateral infection or you wait for the biopsy report to come in? Sir, if uh, uh, um, La, uh, a wage biopsy in wage biopsy it is moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma is already there so we can so we'll go further with uh, a bilateral inguinal modified inguinal lymph node dissection. But uh, the initial biopsy not, uh, specified anything which shows it yes. is a highly invasive uh, malignant lesion because they are just specified it is a moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. The question is that based on the which has been shown, you had gone ahead with a partial penectomy. So the question is, at the same sitting, will you do this modified bilateral inguinal lymphadenectomy or you will wait for the further biopsy report after partial <coughs> penectomy to come in to contemplate on a modified bilateral inguinal lymphadenectomy? Yes. Uh, the basis of the initial biopsy you are not able to give a comment that it is a T1B lesion, no? Yes, sir. It is only apparent now. Yes, sir. So we can do wait for bilateral in modified inguinal lymph node resection till this uh, histopathology report is came. My question is where we will go for bilateral lymph node resection and where we will not go for this resection? What are the situation? What are the clinical stages? Sir, if the uh, uh, patient had lymphovascular invasion, the high-grade uh, tumor, then we should go for uh, uh, bilateral modified inguinal lymph node dissection. If it is uh, T1A uh, or uh, uh, T1A, then we can wait and uh, observe the uh, 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 for inguinal lymph node metastasis with uh, close follow of the patient. It's only T1A or it is uh, also depends on the grade of the tumor. Grade of the tumor is also, yes. Exactly. So, indication to observe. If it is grade 1 and 2, uh, grade 1, then we can wait uh, for uh, observation. And in grade 2 and 3, uh, grade 2 is intermediate risk and grade 3 is uh, high risk. In that, we have to go for so, uh, modified lymph node dissection. So in this patient with the upfront incisional biopsy, you already knew that it was a grade 2 lesion. Yes. So there was 
no no need this patient needs some inguinal intervention yes. right so that is why you are right in saying that moderately differentiated means he needs some kind of inguinal intervention in this patient yes okay. only thing what form of that inguinal intervention is going to take that is still open to discussion you cannot say that inguinal lymph node dissection there are other options also in this patient yes. the other options what are the other options uh -huh. which has to be taken into account is the grade of the lesion whether there is presence of lymphovascular invasion whether yes. there is presence of perineural invasion yes, and involvement of the corpora or or nevus or spondylosis based on which you have to take the decision yes sir. what are the other uh, things that you could have done besides the modified inguinal lymph node dissection sir this is the bilateral non uh, palpable lymph node here we have to do uh, uh, modified lymph node dissection so better prognosis what do you mean by modified lymph node dissection and what is the difference uh, with with uh, standard lymph node dissection so modified lymph node dissection is uh, 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 limited dissection with uh, uh, low morbidity post post op morbidity here the uh, uh, margin of the dissection is uh, uh, mid, uh, uh, superiorly in, uh, 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 medial uh, so, sorry uh, medially adductor longus laterally up to the uh, sartorius uh, up to the femoral artery femoral artery up to the femoral artery uh, 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 inferiorly fem uh, fossa ovalis and superiorly up to the uh, lacunar ligament so what is the difference between a modified inguinal lymph node dissection and a superficial inguinal lymph node dissection are they both same sir superficial inguinal lymph node dissection uh, in which we are doing uh, uh, dissection above the fascia lata but here we are also removing in modified lymph node dissection we are also removing the uh, lymph node or clocket in modified so was okay so you will do a bilateral superficial inguinal lymph node dissection or you will do a do a superficial as well as deep uh, sir i will do a modified uh, superficial inguinal lymph node dissection bilaterally superficial and deep both no sir no deep uh, only superficial sir with uh, clocket lymph node so you will do superficial modified inguinal lymph modified typically means it's a superficial dissection yes. but you are going to add the lymph node of clocket which is a deep lymph node yes so sir modified inguinal lymph node you want to sample the deep lymph node also that's it yes. right. okay. like to have a frozen section would you like to have a frozen section uh, after the superficial dissection yes sir if frozen section uh, uh, lymph, uh, frozen section uh, uh, available then we can do uh, if enlarged lymph node is found intraoperative then we can do frozen section and if more than two lymph node palp uh, more than two lymph node positive or any extra capsular extension of the metastasis is present then we have to do lymph node uh, deep lymph inguinal lymph node dissection with pelvic lymph node on that side absolutely said and opposite said modified inguinal lymph node dissection do you follow up these patients sir according to po uh, positivity of the lymph node uh, we have to uh, follow up the this patient uh, like if uh, less than two uh, lymph node is positive then uh, we can uh, 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 six monthly follow up for two years and uh, further we can uh, follow up uh, one yearly but if the more than two lymph node is positive uh, uh, then we have to uh, uh, and or any pelvic lymph node is positive after that also then we have to uh, give patients adjuvant chemotherapy okay. okay learning points from this are the margins of resection during the partial panectomy what is the minimum margin that you can have during the partial parenchyma sir earlier it was earlier it was sir 1 to 2 cm uh, 
but nowadays we can take uh, if uh, uh, in bi uh, initial biopsy if it is low grade tumor then we can take 5 mm and if it is a moderate or uh, high grade then we can take 1 cm margin they are also uh, saying according to the grade for grade 1 you can have yes. as as small as 3 mm grade 2 can have 5 mm grade 3 can have 8 mm like that It also yes. they are also proposing like that so how will you manage uh, the management of inguinal lymph nodes uh, that is the most important prognostic factor yes sir for all non invasive about 25% are missed micrometastasis are missed surveillance is can be done for low risk cases and uh, what about dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy sir in uh, initially there was sentinel lymph node biopsy in which false negative is around sir 20 to 30% to decrease this false negative uh, this dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy with uh, technetium 99 uh, uh, colloids uh, uh, came in which we have to inject this technetium 99 nano colloid uh, for our or our day before around the lesion of uh, the around the lesion area and uh, we can also you uh, yeah, uh, die operatively and yeah. uh, with the gamma ray we can uh, uh, see the uh, um, uh, drainage of the this, lymph node this has a very high sensitivity about 95% sensitivity for yes. dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy so, uh, it is not done uh, routinely isn't yes. it it is not done right now oh, sorry it is done only here. It is only recommended to be done in a very high volume center. Yes, sir. And the other than technician, again, what other thing you want to give? Other than technician, again, what other thing you want to give? What's the dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy? You are using technician, technician, and then if anything else you are going to do? Uh, uh, a dye, uh, blue dye is uh, also we can use. Why? Well, why do you have to? You have to in, why do you have to inject the dye? Blue dye. Alpha and blue. Uh, around the tumor. Intradermally. intradermally around the tumor uh, peripherally of the tumor we are uh, not injecting centrally because of necros part so we are injecting around the tumor and in dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy we are also using usg also and usg also increase the uh, sensitivity to take biopsy for uh, to see the metastatic lymph node so we will wrap up the case here we we'll move on to the next we we'll move on to the next case i would request uh, sunirmal uh, to present the next case and uh, the <coughs> to come over to take the people in nirmal doctor sir you have to uh, now uh, leave the screen so nirmal yes sir Arshad has he unshared his screen? Uh, I have unshared, sir. Okay, I'm sure. Yeah. Just a minute. Okay. Okay. May I start? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this uh, so patient is fifty nine year old male, and uh, he has a growth of her penis for the last five months, and swelling of her right inguinal region for last four months. and uh, he noticed a small ulcerated growth over the glands five months back which was insidious gradually progressive for last five months then he noticed a swelling over the right inguinal region one month after it was insidious in nature and gradually progressive no aggravating or relieving factor was associated with this inguinal swelling no history of swelling elsewhere in the body ulcerated with pain over the growth for last one month there's no history of bleeding no history of phimosis no lutes No history of multiple sexual partners, no weight loss, no history of breathlessness, cough or any other piece of bone pain. Now, past history, no history of diabetes, hypertension, jaundice, no surgical intervention, no history of any complaints of any penile trauma or ulcerative 
these are the past and no history of any persistent vaginal discharge or genital sense pause. There's no single family history, personal history, no history of smoking. And the general exercise with the normal limits. Testing is generation. Now, this is the growth. You can see the growth. The solitary growth of two into one centimeter involving the glands, usable and shape, full and discharge present, no history of bleeding over the road, external urethral visible, and there was a right inguinal impermeability of size approximately two into one centimeter. So on palpation, there was solitary ulcer proliferative growth of two into one centimeter, surface irregular, consistency was hard, age was inverted, it does not bleed on touch, and if the induration is present up to one centimeter proximal to growth. Lim node on right inguinal, no, uh, lim node on the inguinal region, right inguinal node, no clinically apparent in front of the left. Hard inconsistency, surface smooth, mobile. So this is my case. So I want to know how will you proceed now? Uh, who, is going, who is going to answer? Mukesh Jaiswal? Yes. Yes, sir. Mukesh? Yes, sir. Uh, Deepu Singh. Uh, hello. Good evening, sir. Come over. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Now, the question is, yeah, the case has been presented. Now, the question is, how you are going to move forward with this case? So now we'll go, uh, uh, since most of the history has been taken and all the examinations have been done. So now I'll able to proceed with uh, some routine examinations like CBC and blood, uh, blood examinations, RBS and viral markers and followed by a biopsy of the lesion. So you can see the, the routine examination report. If something is missing here. Yeah. No sir, it's okay, sir. So if you are comfortable with this examination. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do calcium level also? Okay? Yeah. Yes, that should be done, sir. So you said it is okay. That's why. <laughs> so what do you want to do next? But I will go uh, proceed with the biopsy of the lesions. Sir. What biopsy? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sir, incisional biopsy, sir. Which biopsy? So, uh, where is the biopsy? Yes. This is the biopsy report. Yes, sir. This is the biopsy report. Yes, sir. Based on uh, please this biopsy. Mute, please mute the person who is talking behind. Please mute him. Ruma, please mute him. Other investigations, routine investigations, those are very important. Please mute him. So based on this investigation, this is a uh, T2 lesion, sir, and high-grade lesion, sir. <laughs> so now, how do you want to proceed? Uh, sir, since the size of the tumor uh, was uh, 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 2.1 centimeter, and also there is a lymph nodal involvement, uh, so before proceeding further, I would like to, uh, it's a high grade and also there are lymph node positive. So I will note, the, uh, I would like to know the lymph node status also. For that, uh, I would like to uh, go for a CCT of the abdomen and pelvis, sir, before proceeding. So CCT uh, report is okay. There was uh, no, uh, uh, no pelvic lymph nodes is there and no other uh, organ involvement. Okay, sir. Then I will proceed uh, with uh, with his uh, anesthetic fitment, fitment uh, fitness. I will plan for his uh, uh, partial panectomy of the tumor, sir. So, how much margin you want to keep in this partial panectomy? Uh, since this is a high grade, a minimum minimum of one centimeter margin has to be kept. What your what are uh, your aim in partial penectomy? What uh, what advantage you want to uh, provide the patient in partial penectomy? Uh, so that he can void in a standing position, 
uh, without his, uh, his soiling his clothes and if possible he can somehow uh, maintain his sexual life also uh, is it possible to maintain sexual life with the uh, not with, uh, this, uh, <laughs> no uh, sir, not okay we are you are uh, cutting up to 3 cm of penis na no? yes sir so at least uh, the, the uh, main should be he should be able to void without soiling his clothes in a standing position and uh, is there and, any uh, difference between uh, the involvement of corpora cavernosum and corpora spongiosa sir that will uh, uh, stage up the disease sir that will become t3 lesions so the management approach, suppose here they would, if they have given corpora cavernosum involved not corpora spongiosa yeah. whether your treatment protocol would have uh, differed Sir, if it was in, uh, then I will see whether it is proximally located or distally located, oh, and whether same lesion, the same lesion what you have seen in the clinic, the clinical photograph, and yeah. the biopsy report, everything is the same, but they say a scenario is only corpora cavernosum involved, not corpora spongiosa. So, whether there is any difference in the treatment protocol. So still we can go with a uh, partial penectomy if this is a... Uh... Uh, the previously corpus, the corpus, and corpus spongiosum is greater as T2 and now it is T3 in the newer agency classification. Why so? Sorry, sir. I can't... Uh, you are the final box. Dipu, the, yeah. what the uh, Dr. Professor Sunirmal was telling is yes, nowadays in the grading, when there is involvement of the spongiosa, they are given a higher grading, higher uh, thing in the staging. Yes. Why so? Um, may I answer? Yeah. Uh, because, sir, when uh, corpus cavernosa is involved, there are higher chances of lymph node metastasis. In spongiosa, it is only 33%, whereas uh, it is 55% in uh, cavernosa involvement. And disease-free survival is higher uh, in when spongiosa is involved. It is around 77%. Whereas in uh, corpora, corpora cavernosa, it is only 50% disease-free survival after five years. So it leads to an upstaging of the disease and the prognosis worsens. So that is probably the difference. Okay, okay, let's continue. Why, why when uh, spongiosa is involved, the uh, involvement of the node is less and cavernosa is involved? Because of the more vascularity of the corpora cavernosa. There are dilated sinuses in the corpora cavernosa and uh, there is higher blood flow in the cavernosa. Can also lead to skip metastasis when uh, it involves the corpora uh, cavernosa. That is one factor. Any additional factors? That we will answer in the end. Now, Sunil, go ahead. So, this is the, also the final YFC report. Yeah, this is the final YFC report like this only. So, how will you proceed now? Deepu. Yeah. So, so this is the final vaccine, but also the same report came. Okay, sir. And grading is high grade on. So now I'll uh, now I'd like to address the lymph nodes, sir. When? How many days after? Uh, it is said, sir, that we can wait for uh, four weeks or two weeks, uh, four weeks, sir. Is it necessary to wait for four weeks? So by the time that uh, Healing will be there. It is not necessary, but we can wait, sir. For healing is the you are uh, you are doing pen partial penectomy, and the node is in a different area. Is there any problem in doing lymph uh, the lymphadenectomy also in the same sitting as uh, the partial penectomy? You said you are going to do because you already have the initial biopsy report saying that it is a high-grade squamous cell carcinoma. 
there is involvement of corpus spongiosa and uh, lymphovascular invasion and uh, perineural invasion are present. If perhaps in thought, when you are contemplating on doing a partial penectomy, will you, there is palpable node also? So, sir, we can we can do in the same sitting also, sir. Before doing in the same sitting, after getting the biopsy report, will you do any further investigations before doing the partial nephrectomy? You get my question. You have already got a wedge biopsy report. With this wedge biopsy yeah. report, before you uh, plan to do a partial penectomy, any further investigation will you do in this case? Because so CCT, abdomen, and chest, uh, pelvis. Okay, CCT, pelvis. Okay. Do you want to do CT of the groin region? Yes, sir. Uh, CT groin and uh, and your examination by your hand. Yes. Sir. Which is more sensitive? So by hand is more sensitive. So then why you want to do the CT groin? May I ask a small question, Rajiv? Come on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, For groin assessment, which investigation is more important, uh, ultrasonography or the CT? Because it is, yeah. it is mainly indicated for fatty patient in whom the palpation of the groin gets difficult. So which one would you prefer to do? This is just a question. To answer as you desire. So in, in, in case a patient, obese patient, and in cases of operated patient, already operated patient, this ultrasound uh, so, uh, so, so this is uh, your case. Uh, so you are going to operate him. What sort of limb node dissection you want to do? What sort of limb node dissection you want to do in this case? Sir, in this case, uh, radical inguinal lymph node dissection, would, uh, I would like to do radical inguinal lymph node dissection. In both sides or in one side? On the involved side, sir. So, uh, superficial you want to do limb node dissection only on, on no, the, on the, the right involved, side? On the right side, uh, uh, radical inguinal lymph node dissection and superficial inguinal lymph node dissection on the contralateral side. Okay. So what do you mean by radical lymph node dissection? Sir, uh, with all the lymph nodes, uh, the superficial and the deep, in the femoral triangles are the re removed. What is the boundary of radical limb node dissection? Uh, sir, the superficial boundary uh, is the line joining the anterior okay, superior iliac spine to the tubular yes, tubercle. And a long vertical line is uh, dropped from the anterior superior iliac is, uh, is spine 20 centimeter down and 15 centimeter vertically down from the cubic tubercle and inferiorly both these uh, lines are joined this become the so this uh, you want to do radical indication in one side in the other side you are to, uh, want to do so, so do you want to do anything else in the other side anything else do you want to do project section in the other side also yes sir that uh, uh, superficial uh, after superficial dissection, the sample uh, should be given for further uh, dissections. So, it, if it came positive, then what will you do? And then uh, I will complete uh, my uh, uh, dissection on the same side, uh, radical dissection on the other side also. Sir. So, what about the iliac nodes, sir? If the iliac nodes if uh, on the lymph node biopsy, if there are two or more lymph nodes positive or there is any extra nodal lymph node extension, so the pelvic lymph node dissection is warranted, but that can be done under later date also, sir. Uh, can you do the pelvic node dissection in the same sitting? It can be done, sir. By oh. infra, by a infra, separate infra umbilical uh, midline incision. Can you do this uh, in one? Can you do this uh, dissection in one only one incision? Sir, by a uh, S effect incision, we can give an S separate incision and extend our uh, incision superiorly, or a modified Gibson incision can be also given to address uh, the groin uh, pelvic lymph nodes. So, what are the pelvic lymph nodes you want to remove? 
sir uh, external iliac internal iliac and obturator group of lymph nodes so distal common iliac you will take the distal common iliac yes sir Uh, what is the difference of this lymph node dissection from the other malignancy, like bladder or prostate malignancy? You are doing lymph node dissection also for bladder malignancy, prostate malignancy, and this lymph node yes, dissection. Sir. What is the difference? The so difference is the upper limit, sir. In bladder dissection, uh, we go up to the uh, inferior mesenteric artery, the branching of the up, up to the inferior mesenteric artery. You are including the common iliac in bladder. Common iliac and also the all the internal iliac group of lymph nodes. Yes. And then, um, so uh, suppose the your report uh, this case, Rajiv sir, you want to ask anything, Rajiv sir? The, there is a question going on in the chat box to the okay. role of pet in such a scenario. Role of pet. Is pet city, any... yes, sir. Pet city has a sensitivity of uh, ninety-seven to ninety-eight percent in such cases, sir. But uh, hmm. uh, yeah, pet city has uh, has no role. In fact, when there is a non-palpable scenario, but in case of large palpable nodes, yes, pet city has a role. But still, it is in a debating state. Not it is uh, fixed that pet city's role in case of inguinal lymphadenopathy in case of uh, CA penis. So, anything more, so, Sunil? So, no. Nah, the, the thing is that. Question. Pardon? Anyone? One question. There is a palpable lymph node on unilateral uh, inguinal lymph node. Uh, uh, during partial penectomy or before the partial penectomy, why we are not doing FNAC? Seen. Uh, Sunil? Yes. FNAC uh, should be done, sir. If, uh, the question people? is. In case no FNAC in case of palpable inguinal node, is it mandatory or not mandatory? Because FNAC we are not, man, not mandatory. Penectomy here, so we should do FNAC and then proceed. FNAC uh, can be done. Can be done. If the if the FNAC is positive, then we can do simultaneous dissection. But yes, for yes. the septic complications, we want an interval to be there when the antibiotic role uh, comes in. Then uh, we would like to do inguinal dissection after the antibiotic therapy. So this FNAC, the issue here, if it comes, FNAC, will it change your management at the Sir, if FNAC comes negative, then we have to do excisional biopsy. So what is the false negative rate of FNAC? The FNAC is at 30%, 20 to 30% is the false negative rate. Exactly. So if you have a palpable lymph node in the presence of a... Uh, here, at least you need to assume that this is malignant in about 70 percent of patients, right? Yes, so, yeah. so with that, that's in the answer because you have got the biopsy report prior to go contemplating a partial penectomy. It is a high grade squamous cell carcinoma, lymphovascular invasion present, and uh, perineural invasion. In such a scenario, if there is a palpable inguinal node, there is more than 70 percent chance this will be. In because of the metastasis. Yes. So instead of wasting time, you do the lymphadenectomy. Only thing is that you can send it for a frozen section while doing the lymphadenectomy okay. and then plan for whether you require a deep disc or not. Okay. Somebody brought up antibiotics. I just wanted to ask is there any role of antibiotic therapy in the current scenario? In the time. current scenario, as of date now, there is no role for antibiotic therapy. Okay. Yes. So, suppose in this case, the biopsy report came as that uh, more than two lymph nodes are positive in the right side. And so, what will do now? And there is the external node extension also. So, so we will plan for the pelvic node dissection also, sir. If there is more than two lymph nodes are positive, and if there is external nodal uh, involvement, then we have to plan for pelvic lymph node dissection. So, what is the prognosis in this case? How will I explain the patient attendant? So, uh, since this is a high grade, uh, uh, high grade uh, tumor with a pelvic lymph node uh, metastasis, uh, 
more than two lymph nodes are becomes an n2 disease so the uh, five year survival is uh, up to 70 to 80% less 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 than 60% yes sir 60 node positivity is a very poor prognostic feature yes, in yes, case sir. of carcinoma of penis so the five year survival rate drops down when yes. there is uh, node positivity again the level of nodes also uh, is a thing for what how much will be the five year prognosis so if it is superficial it is much more if it is deep it is further worse so node positivity is a sign of poor prognosis in case of carcinoma of penis if it is only one single lymph node with no extra nodal extension then it is about 70% but if you have got more than one lymph node with a, with extra nodal it comes down to 30 to 40% or 40 to 50% and if it is pelvic lymph node it is as, as you know it's only 17 to 30% pelvic so we'll move on to the next uh, scenario uh, because are, uh, I, i'll just have a one quick question to the present yes, uh, uh, group of students so uh, you have done a radical inguinal lymph node dissection on the right side you find two nodes which are positive you have done a modified radical on the left side which was non palpable and no lymph nodes were positive and on the right side you had two lymph nodes and extra nodal extension so somebody said that you have you will plan for a pelvic lymph node dissection so would you do something about the left groin sir only unilateral lymph node uh, pelvic lymph node dissection is advised if more than four lymph node uh, is positive then only bilateral pelvic lymph node dissection no, no i said there is an extra nodal extension yes sir. there are two nodes positive there is an extra nodal extension on the right side on the left side no lymph nodes are positive so you plan for a pelvic lymph node dissection because of the presence of extra nodal extension but would you do anything on the left side no sir on left side modified inguinal lymph node dissection is sufficient why because sir there is no uh, we can confirm on biopsy uh, frozen section no but why why can't a lymph node be positive negative on the superficial and positive on the deep side that is the question actually you know, lymph flows from the superficial to deep and then it goes to the pelvic lymph exactly lymph. exactly so, so in, in carcinoma chances of skip lesions are less exactly exactly that's what i wanted to ask so there are no skip lesions in penis so it is always a systematic flow of lymph nodes so if the superficial is negative the deep is very 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 unlikely to be positive right so i will share my screen now okay may i request uh, dr sunil sir to please stop sharing thank you welcome tarun thank you sir so i hope my slides are visible yeah can you <clears throat> i will i'll put it on the slide show now yeah all right uh who will be taking the questions now i would request a sakib yes yes sakib to right sir. so the history is that there is a 30 years old man who underwent a partial amputation of penis around 6 months back elsewhere unfortunately he has lost the histopathology report and he has a regrowth in the penile stump he has a history of smoking but he has stopped smoking from the last 6 months on examination there is no pallor the periabdominal examination is normal on the external genitalia we can see a fungating mass of 7 cm all over the penile stump there is purulent foul smelling discharge and there is induration which is felt up to the peno scrotal junction <laughs> we are not able to see the external urethral meatus but he doesn't have any voiding disorders uh, on the groin examination there are multiple bilateral mobile nodes more than 4 cm so bilateral multiple mobile nodes more than 4 cm there are no distal neurovascular deficits so this is the picture of the patient so you can see the lesion it is going up to the penoscrotal junction fungating mass with a history of partial amputation of penis external urethral meatus not visualized and you can very well see that there are nodes on bilateral sides and more than 4 cm these are the blood investigations and the biopsy says moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma now how will you proceed in this case 
I would like to know mo more in this biopsy report about uh, any lymphovascular invasion, uh, about um, perineural invasion. Right. Uh, and uh, about uh, what is the HPV status of the patient? Why is the HPV status? Topic? Why is the HPV status important? So because um, penile cancers, about around forty-two percent of the penile cancers, they are related to HPV, sir. Right. But uh, why? Why is it important? I mean, does it help in something? If it is HPV positive, does it carry a great prognosis uh, or a better prognosis? The better prognosis in HPV. Uh, No, this so can somebody name these cells which are seen on the biopsy of a of, of an HPV positive patient? So well, can can was my question audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. So like what it. are the cells called which are infected by uh, HPV? What are coilocytes? Coilocytes. Oh, right, right. So um, the further addition that this was not HPV related, there was presence of lymphovascular invasion and there was presence of PNI also in the biopsy. And FNAC was done, as somebody mentioned, we did an FNAC and the FNAC was suggestive of metastatic carcinoma on the right side. So how will you proceed now? So the, since the, uh, it is a high grade uh, tumor uh, with lymphovascular invasion with the metastatic uh, carcinoma to the groin, uh, I would like to- uh, Bilateral groins. Bilateral groins. So I would like to do uh, uh, induction this uh, total penectomy i would like to uh, actually see the stump whether is there any stump uh, residual stump still left in the no, pain uh, no no may, may i interject so you are happy with whatever information is available you do not want to investigate him further and you want to go for a surgery Sir, I, want to examine, I, I want to examine the stump of the pens is there any stump still left or it is involving okay. up to the base of the pens sir? any further investigation you require Involving up to the so investigation. My specific question is that it is involving the. Basement. I would like to be CCT abdomen and pelvis, and not chest and chest also, sir. Okay, so what would you like to see on uh, CCT abdomen and pelvis? Uh, I would like to see uh, the involvement of the pelvic nodes. What is the status of the pelvic nodes and? Uh, what uh, if, if it is in, in this uh, tumor, it is involving bilateral groins. So I would like to see the vascular status. What is the status of the uh, vessels? Mm -hmm. Is it encroaching upon the vessels or there is a uh, plane between uh, the vessels and the lymph nodes? Which vessels you are specifically talking about? So femoral vessels. So you have to have the MRI of the lower abdomen along with including of upper thighs and the groins have to be included in that. Yes. So you have to look for the vessel uh, invasion as well as the planes between the vessels and the nodes. And uh, is there a role of FDG PET CT scan in this particular setting? No, sir. No, sir, sir. Okay. In the NCCN, it has been said that yes, sir, it, it, it can be considered if you have bulky lymph palpable node. Palpable lymph node, yes, sir. So these are palpable, palpable. bulky lymph nodes. In this, you can do a, a PET CT scan. So it is, it can be considered. So once all this information is available, I will just show you the scan film. So I would like you to read this scan film. So on the so right side, there is a lymph node mass, which is anterior to the vessels. There is mm -hmm. a clear plane uh, between the vessels and the lymph node mass. Mm -hmm. uh, on left can side. You identify, can you identify the vessels for me? Oh, you would not be able to move the vessels. So leave, leave that question. OK, right. So you have a big mass of lymph nodes. You have a plane between the vessels and the node. On the left side, what do you see? There is a uh, lymph node mass which is uh, just abutting the vessel. 
you can just show if possible yes, sir. I will, I will show how, how they have to read the mass. that is yes. the bulky mass which is quite anterior and that is the vessel which is the pointer the vein and there is a clear cut gap between the two but on the left side what do you see out here it is abutting the vessel there yeah, is a there mass which is abutting the vessel yeah. there might be a plane but it is abutting the vessel right so next is the intra pelvic part of the scan so let's see what you see here so there is a lymph node mass where the pointer is ex exactly on the right side at present this is a lymph node mass there yes and you can see the plane between the vessels and the lymph node mass yes sir. and here also there is a lymph nodal mass lymph node mass which is abutting the vessel again right so this is the sagittal scan you can see the right sided big node out here so now how would you like to proceed in this particular case so you have a cfns uh, with a wedge biopsy of uh, high grade cancer with pni with uh, lvi bilateral lymph nodes more than 4 cm mobile along with pelvic lymph nodes this is the scenario so for uh, treatment of the primary tumor uh, we can do total pinectomy in this patient so what is the difference between a total pinectomy and a radical pinectomy and how will you decide whether you are going to go for a radical or a total pinectomy so uh, total uh, so for decision regarding uh, total and uh, radical pinectomy, we have to see uh, margin from the negative margin. If it mm -hmm. is more than one centimeter, we can uh, go for total pinectomy. Now, first describe what is a total pinectomy. Total pinectomy, is pinectomy is a... we remove the penis up to the sus suspensory ligaments. And what is a radical and, uh, pinectomy? Radical pinectomy, we remove the corpora up to the iliopubic uh, junction. Uh, right. So the decision lies upon the Presence of a negative margin. Negative margin, sir. Right. Uh, is there a role of penile imaging for this? Any MRI which can help you decide? Would you recommend an MRI of the penis in these large lesions? Sir, in these large lesions, we can do a penile MRI with the prostaglandin injection. Correct. So that uh, penis is erect and we can assess the invasion of the corpora cavernosa or corpus spongiosa. Correct. So you have treated the primary tumor. Now what you will do? Would you attempt surgery? And if at all, what kind of surgery would you attempt? Or any other modality for that matter? So these are more than four centimeter nodes. Uh, not advisable uh, for surgery. I would try new adjuvant chemotherapy. Right. So how long after surgery would you advise for a new adjuvant chemotherapy? So usually it takes uh, wound, wound healing occurs in two to three weeks. We can, uh, after three weeks, we can go for neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Two to three weeks, correct. So what is the neoadjuvant chemotherapy given in these patients? So we, uh, earlier it was a uh, five fluorouracil. Now it is a uh, taxane, iphosphamide, and uh, this uh, platinum based cisplatin. Right. So whenever a neoadjuvant is considered, please do not answer that earlier it was 5 fluorouracil In a neoadjuvant setting, you do not give 5 fluorouracil It is given in an adjuvant setting. Yes, sir. All right. So you proceed with the TIP. TIP. Now, after TIP, you have, the patient has had good response and he has significant regression in the palpable lymph nodes. Now, what will you do? On the right side, you still have a residual uh, lymph node of 2 centimeters. Left side, there is no lymph node. Pelvis, there is no lymph node. What are you going to do? I can do imaging for the pelvis and this to see the residual. What is the residual? Huh? And if it responds, no. So if it responds, we will do a radical uh, ilioinguinal dissection. No, be very specific. I mean, what all you are going to do? So I am. I have told you the CT findings. So you have had a two centimeter tumor, lymph nodal tumor on the right side. Yes, sir. On the left side, there is no residual tumor. In the pelvis, there is no residual tumor. So on the uh, right side, I will like to do superficial. Uh, I would like to do radical ilioinguinal dissection. Mm -hmm. And on left side, only superficial dissection. Now you are stuck. This is this is a catch question. So you, you, this is this is the wrong answer. Anybody would like to answer? Anybody else? <laughs> Disturbances. 
there a lot of disturbance there i can't hear anything at all can we kindly mute right right so, so the question was the patient had been given um, neoadjuvant chemo and after the course of neoadjuvant chemo we found residual mass on the right side and no lesion on the left side what will you do in such a situation so i will do, like to do sir a complete radio ilio inguinal radical ilio inguinal dissection on the right side where the mass is present 2 cm mass is present and on opposite side superficial inguinal dissection if nodes are present then complete radio ilio inguinal dissection and what about pelvis and in right side if uh, we will see the frozen section if more than two nodes are positive or yeah, there is extra uh, capsular extension of the nodes then we will go for a deep uh, this pelvic lip node removal no 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 that's not the correct answer so this is a trick question actually so the, the guidelines are not very clear about this but yes i mean once you have given the uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy you have given it to make your surgery more feasible so you would go for a bilateral block dissection of both sides and you will also go for a pelvic lymph node dissection because all the clinical characteristics have to be considered which were there pre op yes sir right in a radical cystectomy if it was a nodal extension and you have given a chemotherapy to a person and there are no more nodes that doesn't mean that you are not going to take the nodes out the same thing happens for the penile cancer also so if there are bilateral nodes if there were bilateral nodes you would have to go for a bilateral block dissection along with bilateral pelvic dissection so this will not be frozen section which will be dictating the further course of treatment right yes sir okay so now if you had no response of chemotherapy now what are you going to do sir in uh, no response to chemotherapy so we can go for chemo radiation to the affected site mm -hmm. so is radiation per se a treatment for groin management sir it cannot be used as a uh, single agent but in combination with chemotherapy it, it can be used for management of the unresponsive tumors right and if this patient has not responded and suddenly presents to your opd with bleeding from the groin what is the immediate measure which you can take to stop his bleeding sir we have to assess the amount of bleeding if it is from tumor we can stop it but if it is vascular origin we have to put an endovascular stent or ligate the uh, artery right and is there a role of rt in this particular setting the, there is not a role of a definitive rt but uh, we can use it for palliation no, the, the the word is the word which you have to use is hemostatic rt so you can use it yeah so that can yeah. be used to give to the ipsilateral groin whichever is bleeding to yeah. stop the bleeding and the other options of endovascular stent can also ligation be of the artery and ligation of the artery if possible it can yes. also be sarun there is a question from the audience suppose this as a cutaneous lesion in the groin sir ulcerative lesion mm -hmm. whether the treatment protocol would have changed what you have discussed for an ulcerative lesion yeah in the groin so uh, for an ulcerative lesion see any lesion will have to see for resectability if you give neoadjuvant and then you reassess the particular person if it is re resectable then resect it in majority of the times you will be able to resect this with the help of plastic surgeons so these lesions will require flap procedures but yes majority of the times you will be able to get away with it but ulcerative definitely carries a, a worse prognosis as compared to a mass which is not ulcerative thank you tarun now we will move to the next part i will request dr prashant naik prashant yeah uh, i need tarun to unshare and then i'll start sharing here yeah. stop share now it will be a video presentation of tonic total penectomy step by step yeah so good evening i think most of the points regarding penectomy has already been discussed so i'll just be talking about the operative steps here so where do you do total penectomy you do it in the case of carcinoma penis as you discussed in biopsy proven or patients who are clinically obvious you can do it with projection section 
in the patients whom uh, we cannot offer them partial pinectomy due to its extent, the stump is inadequate for the patient to obtain a directable screen. We need to do a nodal and metastatic evaluation. We need to optimize the patient in, uh, in regards to his hypercalcemia. We need to control his infection and then take up the patient for total pinectomy. Position, the standard or exaggerated lithotomy is used, adequate adding for all bony points and also to preserve the peroneal nerve, uh, this thing, compression. Initial step is an isolation of tumor. We need to thoroughly isolate the tumor so that it doesn't contaminate the, the, the operative wound. And the incision would be an inverted T-set or an angle with, it, with an upward extension. So that is the incision. Here we have seen the incision has been applied. The penile anatomy, we just need, I just wanted to show you the dorsal penile nerves and the dorsal penile vessels, which will come across when you are tackling the uh, penile stump. And this, where the root is written, that is the area of the suspensory ligament. As mentioned in the previous case discussion, this is where we will stop in most of the cases of total pinectomy, unless uh, the extent dictates that we need to go to the inferior ramus to do a radical pinectomy. So this is the step three. Let me just start the video. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'll just take a moment to play it, play the video from the other file. So in this video, we'll see how we dissect through the subcutaneous tissue, how we divide the suspensory ligament, how we ligate the superficial dorsal vasculature, and we open the bug space on the ventral aspect to identify the urethra and dissect the urethra sharply away from the rest of the corpora evermosa. Yeah, so here is it seen? It has not been shared. We can see our desktop. desktop. Yeah, now it has come. Just okay, play. Now, yeah, play. Yeah. I just replay. So this we are seeing that we are dissected in parsley and we are uh, subcutaneous tissue and the suspensory ligament has been cut. So this dissects the penile stump from the root and the suspensory ligament. Then we go all around to free the penile stump on the lateral aspect and the inferior aspect. And then we go on to the other side. Once we have completely mobilized the penile stump, up to the area of the suspensory ligament near the inferior ramus. Next step would be to incise the bug fascia and to dissect out the, the corpus spongiosum on the ventral aspect. So here we're dissecting out the spongiosum on the ventral aspect, creating a plane between the corpus spongiosum and the corpora evernosa. This is far away from the tumor a margin and we have isolated the corpus spongiosum and then once we have isolated it we can incise it so next step would be an incision of the corpus spongiosum with a urethra
So we incise it and then we hold the incised urethra gently and dissect it from the from the overlying corporate evagnosa. So we have to dissect it so that we get the adequate length of the urethra which can be brought down to the perineum. Right. So uh, I'll just share the next video. Yeah. Is it seen? Yes. Yeah. So in this video, we are seeing uh, the second part of this video. We are seeing how do we tackle the corporal hump or the corpora. What we do is we take a large suture that is a one zero vital suture. We take it through and through right in the midline between the two corporal bodies. And then we tie the, both the corporal bodies individually on each side, on the right side and on the left side, so that the corporal bodies are tied on each side after passing the suture right in the midline. After that, we leave a gap of about half a centimeter and incise the corpora right above the suture. Still, there will be some who's, some bleeding which is bleeding from the distal so, half a centimeter. Corpora and we incise the penile stump there. So we see that the penile stump has been incised, and then we just need to over the corpora with 10 or 20 vicryl. It's enough. We oversue uh, some. It is not necessary to tackle the cavernosal artery separately. We do this uh, overseeing in an interrupted person. So that is enough to take care of the cavernosal artery, which is inside. So we can take multiple interrupted sutures to oversee. We are seeing that the corpora has been overseen. I will go on to the next video where we will be creating the Perineal urethroscopy stone. Yes. Uh, Prashant, may I ask you a small question? Yes, Dr. Anjan, please. Yeah, uh, is there any difference between radical penectomy and total penectomy? Yes, actually, that point already Dr. Arun has answered. So, in radical penectomy, if with total penectomy you are not able to achieve a clear stump, or you are not away from the tumor edge, sufficiently away, in that case, you need to remove the corpora right up to the inferior ramus, which is called a radical penectomy. Otherwise, you just stop at the level of the suspensory ligament, and that is called a total penectomy. So this is creation of the perineal urethrostomy. Here, we make an inverted U-step in season. We need to make sure that along with the skin, you include the subcutaneous tissue, a significant amount of subcutaneous tissue is also included so that the skin flap doesn't become very thin and skinny. So you need to take uh, some amount of subcutaneous tissue there and then you create the inverted U flap there. Once you are in the subcutaneous plane, it is easy to find a plane into the already dissected urethral stump, stump above. We have already created length of the urethral stump. We can either take a suture on the urethral stump and bring it down, or we can hold it with an atraumatic instrument and bring it down. Then if there is an excess length, we can excise that excess length. At this point, we should be very sure that there is no portion of the urethral stump. So we should avoid any portion of the urethral stump and then we spatulate the urethral stump and the U-flap needs to go inside the spatulation. That is critical. So the first suture is generally the 
tip of the u flap that goes at the tip of the spatulated urethra that is critical and important to prevent the neomeatal stenosis in the future and then subsequent to that you just need to take interrupted sutures between the uh, the urethral mucosa and the subcutaneous tissue and skin so we are only point is we take as the urethral mucosa and slightly more of the subcutaneous tissue and skin to give a robust anchoring and so that's the end of it so it looks good and then we Wrap it up. So that's Thank you, Prashant. Like uh, now, I would ask the trainees if they can any questions regarding uh, the total penectomy. They can ask anyone. Sir, if it is involved the scrotum wall also, then what extra we have to do in this? So whatever in, involved scrotal skin is that that also needs to go. So there is lot of redundancy in the scrotal skin. Here, so in fact, most of the time you have redundant skin and you have to refashion that. So if there is any involvement, that sort of skin also needs to be completely excised with an adequate margin, about one centimeter. So that also needs. To be. Sachin, like the incision given is always a diamond-shaped incision. So yes. depending upon the involvement of this cutting, you can extend the normal limb of the diamond further down, so that there is sufficient. So you can involve in that uh, the scrotal skin with uh, sufficient uh, free margin. Is there any room of emasculation? This is what I wanted to Sorry. Is there a room of emasculation where you remove the testis? Hello. So there was a question from one uh, Dr. Jaspreet Singh Sindhu. Sandhu, uh, Prashant, are you here? Yes, yes, I'm there. Yeah. Uh, suppose the perineal urethrostomy, the sutures get uh, they get infected. Hmm. There is significant infection in the perineal urethrostomy state. How to salvage the situation? That's a question. So you take care of the local infection. You manage the wound, and uh, if it gives way. This way, then you need to go ahead and handle. So an SPC is a good option in these patients. You need to divert the urine elsewhere, no. then take care of, of the local infection. Once it settles down, you'll have to see again that where it ends up, and then you may need to redo the entire procedure. So here, always diversion is, first of all, the primary thing in such scenario. Then treat the infection, control the infection, and once the infection is settled, proper healing has occurred, then refashion the urethrostomy. Earlier in, an, in the olden days, people used to combine emasculation and do bilateral orchidectomy also. That has probably no role as of now. And in case the scrotum is extensively involved, you should still try to salvage that excess and put it in the inner thigh or something, but uh, try to avoid emasculation. <laughs> Any more questions to uh, Prashant? Anyone? Any more questions? So the always in the CFN is the procedure is asked for a short. What is the difference between a total penectomy and a radical penectomy? Where you will do radical penectomy? Where you will do total penectomy? What is the shape of the incision? What is the extent? What are the salient features? That's why if anyone has any doubts, it should be cleared now itself. So um, it's a straightforward thing, but sometimes it is puzzling. So you have to clear all your doubts here. So two, three minutes more is available. So if anyone has any questions, uh, come forward and clarify it here. We can ask the questions at the end also. So I think we can go on to the next one. So I will I ask uh, uh, Tarun to present this uh, video on video endoscopic inguinal lymphadectomy step by step. Tarun. Right. Sure, I'll share my screen now. Right, uh, I hope the slides are visible. Yeah. All right. So what are the indications for uh, groin lymph node surgery? 
carcinoma of penis, carcinoma of vulva, lower limb melanoma, scrotal tumors. It's a morbid procedure and at least 30% of these cases will either have one or the other complications like wound dehiscence, flap necrosis, seroma formation, hematoma or edema. Now, I am absolutely sure that uh, all the residents would have seen these wounds. I mean, these are very, very common after a groin surgeries open approach and they require prolonged periods of nursing care and in, eventually they might also require some secondary plastic uh, procedures like flaps to cover the defects. This is a very important paper which was published just in 2022 in Indian Journal of Urology and I would advise all the uh, residents to have a look at this. Uh, so they have basically reviewed uh, the literature as far as the comparison between the open lymph node dissection versus uh, video endoscopic lymph node dissection is concerned and they have found that the oncological outcomes of open versus uh, video endoscopic inguinal lymph node dissection are almost same but the complications of video endoscopic inguinal lymph node dissections are much less in the form of less blood loss, less chances of wound infection, less chances of skin necrosis, reduced duration of hospital stays and certain studies have also shown that there is a reduced duration of drains also. So I would suggest, uh, please have a look at this paper. This is a very good uh, publication, which came out just a month back, probably in Indian Journal of Urology. So uh, there are certain approaches for video endoscoping in one section. You can do it by laparoscopy. You can do it by robotic approach. There is a conventional approach, and there is also a lateral approach. So the conventional approach, I will explain all the approaches in the subsequent things. But the lateral approach is, is, is a more feasible approach because uh, it is more ergonomic. The surgeon is at a more comfortable position. Uh, as you're working on the lateral aspect of the thigh, there is less instrument clash. It has been shown that uh, this lateral approach has a um, lesser amount of blood loss as compared to the, uh, uh, the conventional video endoscopic lymph node dissection and the identification of landmarks is also easy. And I, in the video I will show, this is almost like doing a nephrectomy if you're going by the lateral approach because the dissection of the cephalofemoral junction is almost as we do a uh, higher dissection and nephrectomy. So uh, I believe this, this was a paper in robotic whale. So right, so this is how we position the patient. So uh, the, uh, this is the flexion of the knee and the flexion of the hip. And ultimately you can either do it from here or either do it by the lateral approach. So for the first step is that we mark all the important landmarks. So the anterior superior iliac spine is marked. You mark the medial border of the sartorius, which is here. You mark the medial border of the adductor longus. So you can actually move your hand and palpate these muscles and you can mark these. Then you draw the inguinal ligament from the anterior superior iliac spine to the cubic tubercle. And from the midpoint of this, you drop a tangent on which you will find the femoral vessels. Now you have to create a space. Now, how do you create a space? So either you can use a PDB balloon, which is uh, manufactured by auto suture, but it's a costly contraption, or you can use this simple thing, which I'm sure a lot of people who are doing retroperitoneoscopic nephrectomies are using this. This is a simple suction catheter on which we have used finger gloves, and this can be inflated. Now, in the, there are multiple layers by which you can enter and do the veil. So in the open surgery, what we do is basically we give a skin incision and then we raise the skin flap and all the fat is lying down here. And then it's we separate down. the fat out. But in veil, what is commonly done is that you enter into the layer above the deep fascia of the thigh. So the cephanous vein and all the fibro fatty lymphatic tissues actually on the roof. So you tend to make a space between the fibro fatty adipose tissue and the lymphatic tissue and the deep fascia. So this is this red line indicates where we go into the veil. Now, how do we identify this? So we give a small incision on the tentative site of the port and we bluntly dissect it. And the glistening white structure of the tensor fascia lata, which you can see in this particular uh, size, uh, incision is the area where you need to make the space. So you first introduce your finger very smoothly on the, the, uh, on the deep uh, fascia. And then by sideward movements, you tend to make a space just above the deep fascia. And in that space, you can introduce this balloon. And this balloon can be very safely inflated by saline to up to 200 cc's. So this creates a space, as you can very well see in this image, this creates a space, which is our present working space. Now, what are the ports that we use for conventional veil as well as for lateral veil? So for a conventional veil, this is the camera port, which is just above around uh, uh, five to seven centimeters above the knee joint and in the midline. So you drop the tangent where the femoral vessels lie and you put the first port out here. 
and there are two assistant port i mean two uh, right arm and the left arm port which are put around 8 to 10 cm laterally the problem with this is that you are working almost in the sword clashing manner so you are bound to have instrument clashes so the other technique which has been described is called the lateral wheel in which we this this is the port position so you you have the camera somewhere in the uh, uh, in the lateral aspect in the midpoint somewhere at the tip of the femoral uh, canal sorry femoral triangle and the right hand would be here and the left hand would be here so these ports and if you are using an additional port you can uh, put it out here so this can be done either by laparoscopic approach or a robotic approach so if you are doing a robotic approach this is the docking for the conventional uh, approach and if you have to do a lateral approach then this is the docking for the lateral approach so i will show you a small video of a robotic wheel the laparoscopic wheel also goes in the exact same manner and this is a lateral wheel so i will just keep on slowly explaining what is happening and what are the landmarks which you can see so if the image you can see on the uh, on the screen this area is the area of the sartorius muscle and this glistening white structure which you are able to see is the deep fascia or the tensor fascia lata which is covering the sartorius muscle so from the sartorius we slowly slowly uh, tend to move towards the adductor longus and this all fiber fatty lymphatic tissue has to be dissected out above the tensor fascia lata and has to be shifted to the roof so let's start the video now so this is this is how we are just bluntly and sharply we are trying to move into this space so that we are able to dissect the lymphatic tissue on the roof and keep the fascia intact over the muscles out here so we are moving from the sartorius to the adductor any small vessels can be bipolar now you in the video stuck tanu you will see that this is the adductor the longest muscle so i've actually gone a plane deeper and is the deep fascia actually the deep fascia should be covering so this is the wrong plane correct plane so now i put the deep fascia down over the muscle and then i'm going into the sir tell me sir yeah there is some uh, thing interrupted that is not moving freely so uh, i have yeah. sent the video i can if, if the administrators can play the video yeah, i think that you know, the technical team can speed it bring because some internet connect problem is there on your end so you can uh, you can stop the ppt and maybe play the video directly i think that would be better just write that otherwise yeah. or we can have it From the technical team, Ruma. Could I play the video, oh, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You play. Yes. The... Yeah. Okay, okay. It is Doctor Jindal's video right here. Yeah, Doctor Jindal. Yeah. Sir, can you please? Uh, uh, Unfair. Yeah, cancel the. I'm stopping. I'm stopping it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. A screen is visible, sir. Yeah. Now, Tarun, you can uh, explain. Tarun. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. So, can, can you restart the video, please? Yes. So now, this is the sartorius muscle, and we are moving towards the adductor longus. this glistening white structure is the sheet over the adductor longus any small perforators you can just coagulate with the help of bipolar and see this this is a wrong plane so i have bared the belly of adductor longus so i will correct the plane and i have gone into the plane above the deep fascia so now we are moving from caudal to the cranial end any small perforators which we encounter in this space you can just use a ligar shore to divide them rather than using a harmonic because harmonic actually creates a lot of snowstorm effect and clips should be avoided because the patient in the post op will feel those clips so now we are moving up and what we encounter in the 
base here is the sephano, uh, the sephanofemoral junction, which I'm trying to separate. So this is almost like a right-sided uh, nephrectomy. So you, this is how you do a highlight dissection. So this is more intuitive bilateral approach. So we are clearing off the, uh, the sheath and the fascia. You can see the femoral artery there, and you can see the femoral vein there. So now this is the area of the deep inguinal lymph node. So again, the idea would be to separate the deep inguinal lymph nodes. Either you want to separate them in a, send them in a separate packet, you can do that. Otherwise you can send them along with the superficial ones. So now the tissue over the vein will also be taken out as the part of the deep inguinal lymph node dissection. And you go up to the femoral artery, clean the femoral artery, clean the femoral vein, identify the sephanofemoral junction all around. You can see the upper part of the femoral vein there. So now you move towards the inguinal ligament. So now how do you identify the inguinal ligament? So the first glistening white structure that you see uh, on the roof, that is the area where the inguinal ligament lies. So now you can see the glistening white structure that is the inguinal ligament. So once you have identified the inguinal ligament, you have identified the femoral artery, the femoral vein, the sephanofemoral junction, then you uh, put your attention towards the saphenous vein. So this is the saphenous vein. It has been found that it is not necessary to take out the saphenous vein if you can completely remove the fibro fatty tissue around the saphenous vein. So see how nicely we can actually remove the fibro fatty tissue around the saphenous vein. And it has been found that if you are able to save the saphenous vein, then you would be able to decrease the lower limb swelling to a certain extent. Not completely, but to a certain extent. So now we move, uh, so keep the saphenous vein away from the fibro fatty tissue and try to put it towards the base. So these are the branches. So you can coagulate. And once you are done with this, then you take your attention towards the dropping down of the lymphatic tissue. So you have to find the plane between the lymphatic tissue and the campus fascia. So you can see a very well-defined fibro fatty area, adventitial layer. And in that layer, you keep on working and putting the lymph nodes down. You have to be careful that you don't make the superficial flap too thin. And if you are working in the correct plane, you would never encounter skin necrosis. So this is how the entire packet is separated out from the campus fascia. Right. Can you stop this screen share? I'll I just have a couple of slides to show. Right. I'll I'll share my screen now. So this is how the post immediate post-operative image looks. So this is these are the port sites, and we tend to put the drain from down here. And on your right, you can see how these scars look after 14 days of healing. So this is, uh, I'm open to questions. If somebody needs clarification, I'll be glad to answer. There are certain questions uh, coming in so, uh, regarding uh, the skip lesions. How are these skip lesions diagnosed? Uh, how are these skip lesions diagnosed? Skip lesions as in where, sir? The penile skip lesions? Penile skip lesions, yeah. So, yes, so in a, in a larger uh, mass, you that's why I asked the question to the uh, resident that in a larger mass, it is better that you do a MRI scan uh, to find out any kind of skin, skip lesions in the penis. It is not uncommon. It is pretty common to have skip lesions. So MRI would be advisable, not in a small growth, but in a larger group. Residents, anything more you want to know from the video endoscopy? There's a question about advantage of robotics over laparoscopy. So the yeah. advantage of uh, robotics, you can very well see. I mean, uh, the separation of saphenous vein is extremely easy in robotic platform. And the reach of the instruments is also very good. You can actually, it is almost like having your hand inside. 
approximate time taken for uh, laparoscopy as well as robotic is approximately 90 to 100 minutes on each side. So the entire procedure takes approximately 200 minutes. So, uh, sir, for lymphatics, uh, you are using monopolar or bipolar? So the entire stuff is lymphatic tissue only. So I've tried using harmonic. I've tried using Ligasure. I've tried, uh, tried using bipolar. It doesn't matter. It doesn't decrease the lymphoria at all. So and use of stockings, it doesn't decrease the lymphoria. Lymphoria will stop. No uh, surgical intervention or a surgical method will actually be able to decrease the lymphoria. I tend to use whatever is available, but the instrument that choice is either hook or a ligation. Anything more? Anyone? Is there any role of pipe no. test for local staging before surgical excision? If anybody would like to answer. Any role of pipe test for surgical staging before excision? Dr. Manoj Das has asked. Prashant? Yeah, so this point I we already discussed that we can do a pharmacological direction that, and then when you do an ultrasound or an MRI, so that uh, we can see whether the you know, the, the involvement of the penis, hip lesions, all those things can be. Pipe test basically facilitates your MRI or your imaging. So we need to be interested in that. Anything more? So, if uh, there are no more questions, then we will, uh, we have framed out certain questions for the benefits of the um, residents. We will put across to the uh, track teachers. Uh, one is, is the difference between erythroplasia of choirite and Bowen's disease? I think Arshad can take over this. Arshad? Arshad is there? Yes, sir. What is the difference yes, between erythroplasia of choirite and Bowen's disease? Specimen CT involves the propuse, then it is erythroplasia of choirite. If it involves the shaft, then it is Bowen's disease. Okay. Actually, um, this question has already been asked, uh, answered during the discussion. How will you do the biopsy of the penile lesion and what all informations you uh, want the pathologist to convey to you, which has been recorded. It is always a wedge biopsy, which we have discussed. And the information also we discussed, what is the grade of the lesion, the invasion, for example, lymphovascular invasion, perineural invasion, involvement of the corpora and involvement of the spongios. So this already has been uh, discussed. I would uh, ask Sunirmal, what is the sequence of lymphatic spread in carcinoma of penis? This is a common question that is being asked. Sequence of lymphatic spread in carcinoma of penis. So lymphatic spread already discussed. It is it will first go to the superficial inguinal lymph node, then then to deep inguinal lymph nodes, and then to pelvic lymph nodes. And there is also cross connection of superficial lymph nodes to the opposite side. So this uh, cross connection, crossover or crisscross lymphatics is an important awesome. feature in uh, case of CA penis. So that is why we are nowadays doing a lymphadenectomy, even if it's a modified lymphadenectomy, even only involvement on one side, because that can be crossover. Now, next question is, yes. cause of hypercalcemia seen in CA penis and its importance. I would like uh, Prashant to come over. Yeah. So, hypercalcemia is generally seen due to the release of the PTH-related peptide, the PTH and PTG, PTH-related peptide, which can be produced both by the tumor and by the metastatic lesions. So, that is the most important cause. Other causes, like if it involves the skeletal system and all that there, of course there, but in the absence of skeletal system involvement, also patient of CAPNS can have hypercalcemia due to PTH-RP. Yeah. Does it have any prognostic significance? No, it is just that you need to tackle that. You should be aware that these patients could be having hypercalcemia, which needs to be managed before that. Otherwise, uh, there is no, um, it, it, it as such does not have any prognostic significance. Now, the next question uh, to Tarun, which is better, involvement of corpus spongiosum or corpus pavernosum? This has in way answered earlier by Shagit Kumar, but still, an uh, to you, Tarun, which is mm -hmm. better? 
the, the initially, I mean, the last staging actually included both in the same stage. The last TNM staging included corpora cavernosa as well as conjuosa in the same stage. So mm -hmm. why did they change it? So yeah. the prognostication definitely varies. So because of the lymph nodal involvement, the chances of lymph nodal involvement is much higher if the corpora cavernosa is involved as compared to a corpora spongiosa. So it will it is better to have a corpora spongiosal involvement rather than a cavernosal involvement. Okay. Now again, uh, I would ask, uh, what is which is the single most uh, important factor determining prognosis in CFNS? Arshad. Involvement, sir. Lymph node involvement and the grade. Okay. Basically, it is the lymph node involvement which is the most important uh, prognostic factor because the prognosis drops down once there is involvement of the inguinal nodes. What are the factors associated with good prognosis after penectomy and lymph node dissection? Prashant. Prashant, are you there? Yeah, this question also we have answered before. So yeah. the grade of the tumor, that if it's a low grade tumor, absence of lymphovascular invasion, absence of perineural invasion, and if you do add lymphadenectomy, then, then the number of lymph nodes, if it is two lymph nodes or less, in the absence of external extension. So these are all the things which portend a good prognosis in this patient. Again, uh, for a repetition, I am asking uh, Sunir, what are the indications for inguinal exploration in a patient with impalpable lymph nodes? Indications. That is already answered that. Yeah. Still yeah that is already answered. That is the, uh, this T1 high grade lesions, like T1B lesions. But uh, 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 there is a lymph node, lymph lymphovascular invasion and perineal invasion will go for the lymph node dissection. Okay. Now the another question. It is a which because very debatable difference between sentinel node biopsy and dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy. It has also been touched upon. Which one will you prefer, sentinel lymph node biopsy or dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy, Tarun? So if available, definitely dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy is the answer. So there are two methods which have already been discussed. So either you use a, a colloid, a technetium 99 labeled radio colloid, or you can use an endocyanin green and you can track the lymphatics. And because the sentinel lymph node is actually very variable. So the earlier hypothesis of having a fixed sentinel lymph node is fallacious, is ill-founded. So dynamic is definitely the way forward, but provided it has to be available. <laughs> Yeah, so if I can little bit add to this, the sentinel lymph node biopsy was done in the superficial medial part, the superficial medial superior, that the medial superior, as Dr. Harun very rightly said, in 33% or one of the patients, this is not where the sentinel lymph node is. So we miss it in about 30 to 33% 30, of patients. So yeah, so that is the reason why dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy is the option. Another question was, how will you manage bulky inguinal lymph nodes in CFNS? This has already been in detail uh, elaborated by uh, Tarun in his presentation. So I think uh, this is very clear to the trainees, how to manage bulky lymph nodes, what will happen giving um, chemotherapy, if there is a residual mass, what to do. And again, if there is a residual mass, the extent of lymph node dissection doesn't, doesn't have any difference at all. Even if you see total regression on one side, you have to go with uh, as if it was node positivity, you have to go block dissection. So this has been uh, in depth dealt with Tarun. And um, I would like to thank uh, my faculties for today's evening, uh, Sunil Van Choudhury, Arshad Jamal, Prashant uh, Nayak, and Tarun for the wonderful presentation. And it was very crispy because we have a limitation in the timing. In this short time, we could deal each and every aspect of uh, carcinoma of penis. And I think it is, will be clear to the trainees regarding carcinoma of penis. And they have touched upon all the basics and uh, how to tackle and how to manage varieties of uh, a presentation of uh, carcinoma of penis. I, if Mahendra Singh sir is there, I would like to call upon him because um, I have not seen him.
If he is present, sir, can you come forward? I, I think, think he has, he is not present. I couldn't see him also. Okay. Now I will uh, hand over uh, the stage to the secretary, East Zone Chapter, Professor Ranjan Kumar Day. Over to Ranjan. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rajiv. It's a very interesting and the informative session, both for the students and I think many of the senior urologists, those and practicing urologists, those who have joined this session, it is it has covered all the important aspects which can be asked in the examination. I am really thankful to Prashant who has taken out time, Shunirmal. Rajiv and Arshad, all of them have tried their best to give their students, which is very, very essential for their examination. I'm really grateful to Rajiv TP, who is very busy with his the different activities at different sphere. In spite of that, he has given so much of effort to organize this session. I'll be very happy if the students get benefited and it will really fulfill my dream so that the is zone is not lagging behind, at least in academics, in directed for the students. With these small words, I must thank all of you and also the students, those who have participated both for the session and also as the active participant of today's program. And... Uh, I hope I will hear something for them if they get some benefit out of this class. I will be very happy if some of them volunteer, if they say what can more be done to improve our presentations which will be used if they have anything they, they Anybody from the students? Anyone from the students to for their uh, views on the today's class? Anyone? Dr. Dipu, you are present. Are you here? Or Dr. Shahid? Yes, sir. Can you can you give your opinion, Dr. Dipu? Can you give your opinion how you have humble, enjoyed humble or what more can be done? So it was a wonderful <coughs> session, sir. Actually, we have a humble request to that uh, DNB presently. If uh, the pattern of exam is uh, based on hundred marks of OSCE, so if yeah. OSCE questions are uh, also included in uh, twenty minute or fifteen minute session, that would be beneficial for sir. But are you sure OSCE will be there? Because last time there was no OSCE. In the last examination, which held in the month of January, there was no OSCE. So find out whether there will be any OSCE or not. If there is any OSCE, at yes. the end of the session, I will make one day full OSCE for the DNB students. But yes. find out from your body whether the OSCE will be there. Because last year, in the January, I was the convener at the Archicard Medical College and there was no OSCE. Two years before that, there were OSCE. As there are theory examination, so possibly last year there was no OSCE. So please find it out whether there will be any OSCE or not. Yes. Now, I would request uh, the president, the East John This Chair. is my, I will also try to find out. Yes, sir. So I would request uh, the uh, Professor Kalyan Sarkar, President, East John Chapter USA, to give his views on today's session. Over to you, sir. Okay. Hello. Uh, I think this was an absolutely brilliant session, and I congratulate uh, for the entire faculty and brilliantly moderated by Dr. Rajiv and, uh, and uh, excellent uh, case presentations and operative discussions from the others, including Prashant and Sunirmal and Tarun. I'm sure the students have benefited. And uh, I think the quality of discussion was extremely high and uh, for a very, very difficult subject because uh, penile cancer is, um, uh, is actually uh, a very difficult subject uh, because in routine private practice and uh, general hospital, general neurological practice, you see only the occasional case. And when such a case comes, it has to be managed primarily 
by the, all the aspects of uh, treatment, including the initial diagnosis and everything was very, very well covered. So thank you, everyone. I think this was a, a superb session. Thank you, sir. Congratulations to all concerned. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks again for giving us the opportunity to be a part of it. Thank you all.